Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Miles Madison and welcome to Beverly Hills Periodontics. Come on in. So we've been in this facility for about 20 years and uh, what the patients really like about it is that it's very open and welcoming and doesn't look like a cramped, typical cramped dental office. Let's walk this way to our um, clinical floor. Let me show you the way our office is set up. So we are surgical specialty practice. So we have uh, two operating rooms on either side. Um, the rooms are set up similar to each other, but um, they're nice and roomy so that when we have our anesthesiologists here, they have um, nice counter space to set up their equipment and then we still have enough room for us to be able to roam around in. So these are the rooms where we do most of our um, implant and gum surgery procedures. And then we also have two exam rooms um, set up this way and then across the way. And then this side of the practice is dedicated to hygiene and we have our hygienist that uh, oh, can you show do us? the patient cleanings. Yes. So these are one of the rooms. And then another room set up here with their own uh, sterilization area. Dimitri's from Russia, he has, a, he has a YouTube blog for dentists. Um, I can show you the rest of the office. Um, so we have a station for patients if they want to enjoy coffee or tea and cold drinks. Um, and then uh, in this room we have our 3D CT scanner um, that helps us treatment plan patients that need dental implants or bone grafting. Um, it's been one of the best investments that we've made because it makes diagnosis uh, more accurate and we can also treatment plan a lot of the implants uh, on the spot instead of sending patients out to a radiology lab. Mm -hmm. So it's been really great for us. Then um, these are our office spaces where we do the paperwork and uh, things of that nature. So uh, my office is here and then we have... Uh, can we go there? You can go, it's a messy, but you can look at it. Uh -huh. This is your office? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And this is our um, <laughs> staff lunchroom <laughs> and break room where they get to joke around and be happy. Can you tell us uh, why did you decide to become a dentist? So, um, I've always known that I wanted to be a uh, a doctor of some sort, even from when I was, you know, from childhood, from when, when I was 10 years old. Um, and I decided on dentistry because um, I was also very good with my hands, so it's more of an artistic side of medicine. Um, and it also affords me to have a better family life, you know, it's more of a 9 to 5 type of position, whereas with, uh, you know, physicians, they usually have to be on call and they, you know, don't, don't get to spend as much time with their family. And that was very important to me. Uh, but it was a very wise choice for me. It's been a very fulfilling career. Um, it's something that I um, still enjoy to this day. I'm very passionate about it. So um, I don't feel like it's working, you know, because I really help patients and I enjoy it when I'm doing it because of the artistic uh, side of it. So it's been great. Uh, can you tell us more about your dental school? Sure. So the way um, dentistry works in the United States is you have to go to four years of um, university first and then you go to four years of dental school and then if you want to become a specialist then you follow that up after dental school. Um, so I started at age 16. I was a little bit young uh, when I started college and I graduated okay. from University of California 
um, here in Southern California because I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, and then after USC, I went to UCLA Dental School, which is also um, in California. And uh, it was a very hard four years. You know, the dental school, as you guys know, is not easy. And UCLA especially is very rigorous because they train us more as physicians. They're very, um, they, you know, the first couple of years we actually study with the uh, medical students. So we have a lot of classes in common. Um, and that was four years. And then after that, um, I decided that I wanted to be a specialist in periodontics, which is, you know, we do dental implants and gum, take care of patients that have gum disease, that type of thing. Um, and that's a three-year residency at uh, University of California in San Francisco. So I moved away for that, but then I returned back to my roots in Los Angeles. When I was in dental school, I was also doing a lot of research. Um, and this uh, periodontal or periodontology was very fascinating to me because um, it's, it's um, it's not only is it a surgical field, but also you have to use your knowledge of medicine and microbiology to help patients um, improve their oral health. Um, I particularly enjoyed the surgical aspect of uh, periodontics, um, and also because it's a much more of a refined surgical procedure. Uh, what we do is uh, more like microsurgery than you know, doing like big huge flaps and things of that nature. Um, and when I started, it was at the very beginning of dental implantology. Um, you know, implants had been around, but it had, wasn't becoming, it was just becoming very popular. So um, it also had it added that new dynamic to the field of periodontology, which I thought was very exciting. Um, so, it allowed me to use all of my skills, you know, not just as a dentist, but also uh, as a microbiologist and also as a um, surgeon. So it's, again, it's been a perfect fit for me. Um, it suits my personality, it suits what I wanna do. Um, and I'm blessed in that, you know, I'm actually doing something every day that I enjoy very much. So my very first patient, uh, in dental school was, I had to do a very small filling. Uh, yes, I remember her clearly. And I was super nervous. My heart was gonna jump out of my uh, chest. And I remember asking her like every 30 seconds, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? <laughs> and she had to calm me down and said, you know what, you're doing a good job, Just let's just get through this. <laughs> so yeah, that's an experience I'm not gonna forget. But uh, yeah, it was, We've come a long way since then. So the book that had the biggest impact on me as a student and also when I was far, first starting in Perio um, was the book by Dr. Um, Nelson Carranza on periodontology. Um, he was actually the chair of Perio at UCLA, so we were fortunate to have him. Uh, but he, has, he had also written this landmark book. And I remember like reading it over and over again and just like inhaling all the, di all the concepts that okay. uh, he had in that book. So for me, that was a very, very important book. Um, I know it's still, that book is ongoing. It's had multiple uh, new editions. So um, it is a book that I do recommend for people that are interested in periodontology. The second book that I've, you know, I highly recommend is by Dr. Uh, Professor Giovanni Zucchelli, who's um, Italian, but um, he's really a master of gum grafting and periodontal plastic surgery. And he has, this is one of his workbooks, but the main book has got incredible information. It's got really uh, nice illustrations on how to do periodontal plastic surgery. So um, again, if somebody is in the, likes the idea of doing gum grafts and doing it uh, properly, they re should really um, study this book. And also if they can have the opportunity of studying with Dr. Zucchelli, um, that would be incredible.
do I know some? I mean, yeah. I know some because uh, I do some continuing education in Europe, so I do meet some. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if I can remember their names, but I do know some. <laughs> So the biggest difference between dentistry in the way it's practiced in the U.S. versus the rest of the world, particularly Russia and Europe, is um, dentistry here is highly specialized. So we have general dentists that just do like fillings and crowns and cosmetic stuff. And then we have specialists that do most of the surgical procedures or like root canals there's you know um, endodontics um, oral surgeons um, orthodontist whereas in um, Europe and Russia uh, almost everything is done by the same practitioner um, so that aspect of dentistry in the US is a little different um, but you know it, it, there's a lot of benefits to what we do here in that this is all I do. I don't, be, and because of that, I become like really specialized and, you know, I think pretty good at what we do. Um, but for the patient's convenience, sometimes it's better if one doctor does everything in, you know, under mm -hmm. one roof. So this way, you're not referring them to different, um, to different specialties. So um, having known a lot of European and you know some Russian dentists, I have a lot of respect for. Um, the dentists who practice there because you guys must be good at everything that you do um, and um, so uh, I know a lot of them are very dedicated to continuing education and improving their skill set so um, like I said I have a lot of respect for um, my our colleagues um, um, in Europe um, but also I can tell you that in the t last 10-15 years dentistry in Europe has really, really uh, advanced and uh, a lot of the beautiful work that is being done in the world is coming out of um, that part of the world. So I think us dentists here in the U.S. need to kind of catch up now because just uh, the work that's being done there is incredible and mind-blowing. <laughs> Me? No. Uh, <laughs> If some of um, our colleagues from Europe and Russia are interested in having um, studies completed here in periodontics or dental implants, some of the courses that I recommend highly um, are um, courses that are put on by the Spears uh, group out of Arizona. They have a very comprehensive um, program that's exceptionally well run, so I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, but there's, I'm also part of a teaching group where we actually um, not only teach you how to do it on models, but we have a facility down in Mexico where you can actually practice on live patients. Um, and it's a small group and there's uh, instructors um, that kind of stand over your shoulder and hold your hand while you're doing these complicated procedures. And, to me, that's the best way, and it's the only way that you can learn to do it, because um, practicing on a model or on a mannequin, it's never exactly, you know, it's never the same as doing it on a live patient. So uh, that particular course, uh, we always get rave reviews, because um, the participants get to do a lot of surgeries with us watching over their shoulder, and they actually get to feel, you know, the feeling of, you know, what it is um, that we're trying to teach them. Um, but um, if people are interested, they can always reach out to me and I'll be happy to connect them with not just our course, but all these courses that are offered in the U.S. Uh, to learn the different techniques. So, um, the prices in the United States uh, are typically higher than what it is in Europe or in Russia. Um, and some of it has to do with the fact that we just pay more for stuff here. So for example, the same dental implant that's made by the same company is uh, 
is way less if you buy it in Europe than if we buy it here. Um, so our fees are, tend to be a little bit higher, but the question is like, what would a dental implant cost in the United States? Um, so like I said, as a specialist, I only place the implant. I don't make the crown that goes on top of it. But a typical fee in my neighborhood in Beverly Hills is around, let's say $2,500 for the surgical placement of the implant. And then the fee for the crown is probably another $25 to $2,800 to put the crown. So for you know, a, a tooth start to finish for an implant, it's gonna be no less than $5,000. My preference for dental implants, uh, implant companies um, is I've been a big fan of the Strawman company for dental implants, um, but I'm also a big fan of Nobel Biocare. Um, so I would say between those two, um, those are my go-to implants for, for majority of my patients. So my advice for dental students, and my son is actually in dental school right now, he's a first year dental student, is that you got to develop your passion for it. Um, I think young people nowadays think that you wake up one day and you're just passionate about something and that's the one you want to pursue. But um, what you really got to do is find your passion. And by that I mean find an aspect of dentistry that you really love and then put time and effort into it to get better and better. And when you reach a level of mastery is when it becomes really joyful and it becomes really beautiful. Until that time, it's like a little bit of a struggle. And I think most people give up before they get to the level of mastery, so they're always like struggling a little bit. But I think if you really push yourself and get to that point where you're really good at what you do, then you're not working, then it's just pure joy, it's pure pleasure. Um, and that's what I recommend. I think everybody just needs to push through those hard times and get to a level where they're comfortable and they're just like enjoying it every day. So I wanna thank everybody for uh, visiting my office and uh, listening to me. And hopefully we'll get to meet one-on-one, -on -one, um, either here in the United States or hopefully soon I'll be able to come to Russia and <laughs> shake some hands.